Episode 7, here we go. Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to the Pages and Pills YouTube channel. My name is Hannah and today I come to you with a regular podcast style episode all about what I have been knitting, what I'm currently knitting on and some new acquisitions. So get settled, get cozy. I hope maybe wherever you are it's already a little bit more autumnal than here it's very hot fair warning at some point i may change out of this knit top because it may get too warm also if it sounds windy that's the ac it's on i couldn't switch it off for this episode because otherwise i would melt in here it's the 6th of september and here in new york city it's extremely warm we're somewhere in the 90s fahrenheit 34 degrees Celsius I think so it very much still feels like the heat of summer but I still wanted to bring a little bit of cozy knitting vibes into my place and update you on the pieces that I finished so without further ado let's just jump right into my finished objects and with that I can also actually just tell you what I'm wearing because this is my first finished object this is the Tonight Top by Lily Kate France, or I think on Instagram her handle is Lily Kate Makes. And this, as you can see, is a sleeveless top uh, with a little mock neck, turtleneck, depending on how long you want to make it. Um, I'm gonna try it to show. I'm gonna try to show it to you as best as possible, which is always a little bit difficult with black yarn. I have come to realize ever since I showed you this piece as a work in progress during my last episode. The yarn that I used for this is Cascade Heritage Silk, which is I believe an 80% Zuborosh Merino 20% silk blend and this is the colorway Pure Black. I bought 200 grams of this, so two full skeins. Ended up using less than that. I still have maybe 40 grams left over. I don't recall that right now, but I did write that into the Ravelry page, so I will link all of the Ravelry pages for either my objects or the patterns down below so you can also check for all the details there. This uh, top is knit on 3.25 millimeter needles, I believe that's a US 3, so it's a quite small needle project, um, but it was very enjoyable to knit. In fact, I think this is one of, the, of my favorite pieces that I've ever made. The whole process was a very cool mix of comfortable in terms of lots of stockinette but also challenging or giving me new opportunities to learn new things that I hadn't done before and I always like if there's this sort of blend between it doesn't feel too intimidating because for a lot of the time you actually know what you're doing and then sometimes there are bits in there that uh, challenge you a little bit and this one was definitely one of them. I think it's a beautiful piece. I'm gonna get it up so you see it a bit better. It has these beautiful, uh, this beautiful like four seam under the arms that I hope you can see here depending on how I catch the light. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can see it here a bit. Um, the finish at the bottom is two by two rib. The same as what we have on the cuff, which this way maybe you can see a bit better. On the cuff, no, on the neckline. And the absolute game changer for me for this top is the double knit armholes, which curve super nicely around the arm. So when I knit this first, I was first afraid that the underarm um, depth would be too much that it would be really gaping because when I tried it on you could like really see my bra the side of my bra and for a top like this with a collar like this I didn't feel like that would suit it very well but then I decided while I was um, when I had joined in the round I decided to pause on the body finish one of the armholes to see how it would actually look like in the end um, and it's perfect. So I really like how it turned out. Something's up with street noise today. Um, so I really like how this turned out because it does not sit too closely in my armholes. It doesn't press anywhere. It's not like riding up, but also it's not too low. So it's a very, very comfortable, barely there kind of, I don't even feel that it's their armhole, um, which is 
yeah, as I said, perfect. When I finished this top, I couldn't stop staring at it for a while because it looked so store-bought in a good way because all of the finishings were so well thought out also the fact that I knitted in a black yarn where you don't have any color variation obviously makes it a little bit more commercial looking as well maybe but I was really proud of this when I finished it and I still am so I'm I'm very glad that I knit this even though it was in black and thus maybe not the most fun process because there's no color change or anything but I knew that I wanted to have a piece like this in black and I've worn it several times now once in the evening to go out um, with a skirt which was very nice and then also just once or twice during the day with some jeans and both work super well so this top is definitely one that I think almost fits with anything that I have in my wardrobe and that's exactly what I wanted something that I could dress up dress down combined with everything and if I go on like a short trip or something I could take it with me knowing that it fits with everything else that I bring so it's perfect I really like it I'm pretty sure I want to make more of the designers patterns because she has a lot of really really pretty well thought out patterns out there and I found the pattern also very clearly written very well explained especially this challenging new technique for me that was the double knitting around the armholes including short rows and so on I was intimidated by it but yeah she provides very good explanations very good diagrams also to show what she means so if that's something that sounds like you would want to learn I would also recommend this pattern I think uh, I could also see myself making this again maybe in a more in a lighter color or just in a yeah in a more brighter pop of color kind of I think that would be nice uh, the only complaint complaint maybe it's not like a huge deal breaker but the only complaint I have a bit is about the yarn so in the original pattern the designer uses a wool and silk blend but I think the wool is different it's not a superwash wool this is the one that I found in my local yarn shop that had a nice feel to it and it also does have a nice feel to it on the skin so as I said there's superwash merino silk blend but I think owing to the superwash content I'm not sure how well you can see it but already up here it starts to pill a little bit yeah you can really not see it on camera <laughs> um, I can definitely see it up here when I'm in the right light it's not super duper visible but it is a slightly pilly yarn um, I already noticed this as I was knitting it, like all the parts around the shoulders that maybe got a little bit more friction already because I was moving them around as I was working on the different panels or like pieces of the project, they already started having this kind of sheen on top that not a proper pills but this sort of fuzziness that comes off. Um, and I think that's not the very best yarn maybe. I think it's okay but I think if I would knit this again now that I know how much I like the fit of it and how nice it is to wear it I would probably opt for something that is not a super wash yarn and something that may is le maybe less likely to pill so fair warning to you if you're planning to make this think a bit about it because as you're wearing it close to um, skin and because it has this more maybe slightly more elegant look to it because of the um, armhole finishings, the mock neck and so on, think about which yarn you would use for it because I feel like it, if the yarn starts pilling it takes a little bit away from this sort of more elevated look. But yeah, it's not too noticeable, it's around here but I am definitely wondering if it would show up more the pilling if I start wearing like handbags on top or something like that. But we shall see, I'm, I don't think I'll avoid any heavier load on the shoulders just to protect the yarn of this top I'd rather try it out and see that if it doesn't work that I might have to knit it again but yeah that's that's basically I think all I have to say about this top again very huge success I love it and I think it's gonna become very much a stable piece in my wardrobe okay let's see how long I can bear <laughs> to wear a wooly turtleneck um, in this weather but anyways let's move on to my next finished object because I have a second one 
and I want to talk about this a little bit as well. This is the cottage cardigan, which is a pattern by Jacqueline Cieslack, and I knit this in Pearl Soho linen quill in the colorway butterscotch yellow, which comes out I think a little bit brighter on camera than it actually is, but it's this really nice golden yellow. I always say to me it reminds me of a sort of like apple cidery color, maybe apple cider with cinnamon, I don't know. You can see that I am wishing for autumn with all my comparisons, but I love this color. It's not something that I usually wear very often, but I felt like something this colorful was definitely missing in my wardrobe. The cottage cardigan is a raglan construction, as you can see here. Uh, it has quite a deep armhole. I'm going to put it on in a second so you can uh, see it better. It has quite a deep armhole, is fairly cropped overall, and then has these just regular length uh, long sleeves. And the interesting thing about this is that the original sample is um, knit with a different yarn, but it works fairly similarly, I think. So you use a fingering white weight yarn with some fluff to it. So in my case, the linen quill has this alpaca linen content that make the yarn a little bit fuzzier. Maybe you don't can't see it super well here because after blocking the fuzz disappeared a bit. But the original sample, I think she uses a fingering weight yarn that has some mohair in it as well. And you lose it, you use, you, you knit it at a looser gauge. So I knit this on four millimeter US six needles, which is kind of a bit loose and big for a fingering weight yarn. But the idea is that the fluff of the yarn, if you use that type of yarn, will sort of fill in the holes. And this way you get a very lightweight cardigan and in fact this is pretty lightweight i think the buttons added definitely some weight to it but i bought three skeins of the linen quill to use for this and i almost have half a skein left so i used under 300 grams for this whole cardigan which makes it very nice and lightweight and yeah i i really like this idea with a looser gauge to create like a thin lightweight cardigan that is not overly fluffy. I think especially for the transitional weather that will hopefully start soon, this will be very, very handy. So it's not a thick woolly cardigan, but something thinner and nice to layer. I knit this in a size three and I'm not sure if I measure the cardigan wrong, but if it's buttoned up, it gives me less positive ease than I thought it would, but it's still pretty much fine. So maybe it's also that my gauge switched or changed a bit from when I uh, swatched that it ended up being tighter than expected. I will put it on just to show you. I mean, I'm planning to wear it open as well, but I kind of, when I sewed on the buttons yesterday, I wanted to see how, if it also worked buttoned up. And here we go. So it's a bit, the layering doesn't, I wouldn't layer it with this top, I think, or maybe if I would tuck it in. I can try that for a second. Let's see. All right, so I tucked it in. I think tucked in it looks nicer with the with the high-waisted shorts that I'm wearing. So as you can see, was what I said before, we have quite long sleeves. Maybe I made them a little bit too long, but I also do like to wear them not really cuffed up, but push them up a little bit. And for that, I like when they're kind of loose. Then you have this armhole that is quite low my armpit is here this is something that the pattern um, is written for so it's not a mistake or anything and I wanted something like that as well to have lots of room uh, under the arms and I like how this sort of low arm uh, separation works together with the slightly more cropped body Oof, I'm getting really warm okay so let's speed this up um, the buttons that I used are, I will link them below as well. I talked about this in previous episodes. They are wooden buttons that I picked up at my local yarn shop um, and these are made out of maple. I really wanted to give this whole cardigan a full cottagey, cottage core vibe aspect by adding these really big chunky wooden buttons rather than something small and dainty. And I really like how this turned out. Uh, I also think 
with these big buttons it gives the cardigan when I wear it buttoned up a quite nice look so that's that's the cardigan I will unbutton it now so I can show that as well so yeah I also knitted a bit crop because I wanted something that I could wear with dresses in autumn and winter and the cardigans that I have so far are either very very boxy well they are very boxy and long or longer hitting about at maybe hip height or a little bit below and I wanted something that was really like just kind of skimming the top of the hip so that all of the dresses that I have that are a bit uh, sort of cinched in at the waist would work well with this. Um, what else is there to say? I used the surprisingly stretchy bind off on the body and on the sleeves because that's a bind off that I really enjoy for one by one rib and I think the pattern suggested something else but that's my go-to for one by one rib just so that it doesn't end up being too tight and I almost have the last button open. I feel like the buttonholes still need to um, adjust a little bit. I need to pull them properly to fit with them, um, to fit with these big buttons. But yeah, un unbuttoned, it's like this. And I am very much looking forward to wear this once the weather gets a little bit colder. Again, as I said, I probably wouldn't wear this together with the turtleneck just because I feel the color combination is not really my thing. I feel a little bit bee-like with the black and yellow. <laughs> so maybe not something that I want to wear, but who knows, maybe I'll decide differently afterwards. Take this off because it's really very warm. Double wool, maybe not the best idea for this weather. This is the second cardigan that I have made so far and I always notice that cardigan making is not the very most enjoyable experience to me because of all the pearl rows. In regular patterns I don't mind purling, especially if you're constructing the start of the at the start of the pattern, if it's a top down, if you do short rows or if you have to knit on the separate panels back and forth a bit before you join them. I really don't mind purling there, but with the cardigan, the purling never really ends until you get to the sleeves um, and the rows get really, really long. So I notice that there after some time, I get a little bit annoyed with the purling. So that usually takes a little bit of enjoyment away from me uh, for the cardigan. Also, I've only made cardigans so far that have the button band already sort of built in as you knit so you don't have to do it separately. I've heard that the separate button band if you have to do double knitting can be quite a slog as well. For me the um, having the button band as you knit obviously makes it faster but also I find it a bit hard sometimes if you notice for example with this cardigan I couldn't have made it much longer because I already decided on the distance between each of the buttonholes and because I only have a certain number of buttons I can't really give it length because then I would either need to get more buttons or I guess sort of like so shut the buttonholes that I'd made and then do some afterthought buttonholes or some complicated thing like this right so I think the next cardigan that I make would actually be one with um, button band that you add at the end just so I don't have to think about this um, up front and yeah it's definitely something that also sometimes slows me down with knitting the cardigan that I have to take my time thinking how I want to space the buttons how much length I can still add after the last button without it looking weird so all of these things contribute to me usually taking a bit longer for a cardigan than for a sweater and also making the process a tiny bit less enjoyable. Still enjoyed working on this a lot, but I always know that or note that after a cardigan I need to take a little bit of a break before I can make the next cardigan. On the other hand, I feel like cardigans also have the biggest payoff because uh, before I became a knitter I would always find these gorgeous sweaters in shops, maybe not made out of 100% wool or anything but still very very nice looking, very comfortable, but I didn't find good cardigans very often so now that I am a knitter I can finally 
make the cardigans that I want and it's I see a much bigger change or improvement in my wardrobe in that sense that or like a gain from knitting so that's what I mean with the payoff is bigger than for sweaters for me so far because cardigans is really something that I love wearing I love matching up or combining with my wardrobe but I haven't had many cardigans before so I don't know what I want to say with this just just my thoughts about cardigans I guess but I think I will need a little bit of a break again now after having made this cardigan but I'm pretty sure that at some point within the next year I'm gonna make another one um, just because I love wearing them so much but I'll yeah I'll think a little bit about what I want to make I guess maybe something more f slightly more fitted at the shoulders and with a double knit button band could be could be my next cardigan but let's see up to my whips my whips I have three whips on the needles one of them you know so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that one but I'll start with the other ones the first one that I'm going to talk about is in this project bag that is from Clio's yarn shop which is a yarn shop here in New York City that I very much like this is where I got the yarn some months ago and then I went back there a few weeks ago and got this project back which is very cute they have these really cool Friday happy hours that are very fun to join so if you're in the New York City area I would recommend checking those out but the top that I want to talk about is still a fairly summery project and after I finished the tonight top I was contemplating whether I wanted to continue with summer knits switch over to more autumnal sweaters cardigans and so on I mean I had the cardigan on the needles at the time um, but still wanted to figure out if I wanted to make this full switch into autumn already or not and decided against it due to several reasons. So A, one reason was that it is still so warm here that I thought, okay, if I finish any sweaters in the next few weeks, I wouldn't be able to wear them anyways. Case That's the case with the cardigan. I think I finished it about a bit more than a week ago, blocked it, took my time with putting on the buttons because it was still too warm put on the buttons yesterday, tried it on, realized that I liked it, took it off because it was too warm and I think I still have to wait a little bit before I can wear it. So that's kind of what I was thinking and it's it's never so much fun to finish knits and not be able to wear them because of the weather. So I thought, okay, I can, I can do one last summer piece. Um, so I cast this on. This is the Uptown Tea by Tori Yu was Tori Knits NYC on Instagram and as I said I got this yarn at Clio's yarn shop so this is the Noro Sonata in the colorway Cat Mint. The yarn is a blend um, out of, just checking for the ball band tag whatever so this is what this looks like. It's a blend out of 35% cotton 25% viscose, 20% silk, and 20% polyamide, and it comes in 360 meters per 100 grams. As I said, the color is catmint. It's this really, really nice, fresh, cool lavender, which I absolutely fell in love with because I love all things pink and purple, and especially if they're these really gorgeous, cool, but also um, intense shades. So yeah, that's the yarn. Um, okay, I'm going to talk about the yarn for a moment first. So this is one of the summer yarns that I picked up because I wanted to see how cotton or cotton blend yarns feel. I had made a t-shirt at the... I made a t-shirt in spring out of a worsted weight cotton that I really didn't enjoy because it was very dry and still kind of thick for such a yeah, more summery fiber. So this one, l yeah, looked very interesting to me. And I have to say that working with this is pretty nice, actually. It's obviously drier than a wool and has a little bit less stretch or like bounciness to the, um, to the fiber. I don't know how well you can see this. Like I can't, it doesn't have a lot of give if I pull at it, but it's quite soft and it glides fairly well even on wooden needles which is not something that I have experienced with the other cotton that I knit with and also not with the pure silk for example by knitting for all of that um, tends to be a bit 
drier and stop a bit more. So working with this is definitely enjoyable. The yarn itself is a bit irregular in the sense that it has some thin and thick sections and also a little bit of variation in terms of the color, but I don't mind either of those at all. So yeah, I'm very happy to have tried this out now. So I know that this is a summer yarn that I could picture myself using again, maybe in a different color. And the project itself, so I have just about joined in the round um, a few rows ago. This is a t-shirt with this sort of like rolled edge, so you don't actually change anything here at the top anymore. And then it has this gorgeous, very simple lace pattern on the sleeves and just simple stuck in it on the front and back. The t-shirt has some short row shaping, so you already see that the back is raised in comparison to the front. And yeah, so far I'm really, really enjoying this. Definitely I notice when it t gets a tiny bit cooler here, I work less on this just because the color for me is more spring than autumn. But I'm enjoying it a lot. And I think now that I've joined in the round, uh, I might, yeah, it might not take me super, super long anymore. The sleeves also don't have a lot of work left to do. I think it's just a little bit more of this pattern repeat and then an I-cord bind off. So overall, I hope that I can still finish this while it is warm and then wear it a couple of times or even more to, yeah, enjoy it properly. It's definitely still one of those smaller summer needle knits. So I'm knitting this on a 3.5 millimeter US 4 needle. So it is, it does take its, its time. But I'm looking forward to have this. And I also really, really, really like this detail on the sleeves. I think it's so cool. It's like this, I don't know, it's a raglan t-shirt, but it has this something extra because of these, this leaf lace. And it's also very satisfying because I realized that I like this combination of some stockinette knitting and a bit of lace in between to spice things up a bit to make it just the process a bit more interesting. Now the one thing that uh, the drawback that the lace has is that I realized I made a mistake but I was too far along to bother ripping back. I think here this darker line that you can see is me adding in one knit row rather than a new lace repeat and it's the same on the other side so at least it's equal i think if i put it on you can see it a little bit but not too too much so i didn't feel like ripping back i think 10 rows to fix it so i just left it there but yeah so this is the uptown tea one reason why i wanted to make this is also because i will be moving soon but i wanted to knit, finish and wear this t-shirt while still in New York because I bought the yarn during the Brooklyn yarn crawl in a New York um, yarn shop. The pattern designer is resident to New York and the t-shirt also has a very New York name. I mean Uptown could be anywhere else also, right? But I also always associate it with basically this area of the city. Um, so yeah, definitely still had to happen while I'm here. So I think this is the one that I'm going to focus a bit more on in the next weeks just because I want to finish it while still here and while it's still warm. Moving on to my current favorite work in progress that is still a bit tangled because I haven't joined in the round yet but I'm going to show it to you as best as I can. This I'm going to have to untangle a little bit. Basically, this is a favorite because I have realized that while I love soothing stock in it in the round, any kind of pattern that is a bit more engaging as with the lace before or even more engaging because of different sections will make me want to knit on it more. So in that sense, I guess I'm kind of a process knitter uh, when it comes to more complicated patterns. Not that they have to be necessarily complicated, but there has to be a bit of change in them. So the one that I'm currently talking about is the beginnings of my Ingrid sweater. This is a pattern by Petite Knit, 
which has all of these different panels. I think maybe on the back section that I've done you can see them better because I have one of each there. So you have this moss stitch, this crisscross and then this rib, these bars of rib and in between you have all of these eyelet rows separating your, your pattern sections. I have just recently joined the front and I did this crisscross pattern this morning and now I think I still have a little bit left before I can join in the round which I'm very much looking forward to because I'm loving this project <laughs> I'm so excited about it every time I pick it up it's yeah it's amazing I really like it um, I'm knitting this in cascade 220 not the superwash version just the regular I think it's Peruvian Highland wool um, regular Cascade 220. This is the colorway natural. I wanted basically, okay, so basically my reasoning behind getting this color for this sweater was that I wanted to be Chris Evans and Knives Out or Harry and her, when Harry met Sally, um, both wearing their iconic white jumpers. And I wanted to have a jumper just like that, white, very sort of classy, possible to combine with everything, very fluffy looking and that's what this is giving me. I think the original pattern suggests uh, holding a fingering weight and a mohair. Does that make sense? Yes, a fingering weight and a mohair. But because it has this moss stitch and like these crisscross sections, I didn't want a mohair to sort of wash it out, but wanted to have really crisp looking stitches. Um, and that's what I'm getting with this yarn. I'm making this sweater together with Madison from Madison Montes. We decided to, yeah, she had yarn for it for a while. I wanted to make it now and we cast this on together about two weeks ago, I would say. It was very cozy. I went to pick up the yarn and then we went to a coffee shop and had our first pumpkin spice latte of the season while casting on our sweaters. In the excitement, we already made our first mistake, but um, that was related to the short row shaping at the back. We did the short rows, we just didn't do them fully the right way, but I don't think you could see it, so I didn't bother ripping back when I went, when I realized that we should have done something differently. Hers also looks very pretty, is a different color, but maybe whenever she uploads a new podcast episode, you will be able to see it, I don't know. But yeah, I'm really liking this a lot. I'm loving the pattern itself, I'm loving the experience of knitting with a dear friend together again, especially as we could still see each other here and knit on our Ingrid sweaters together. It's been very fun to, yeah, just to meet and work on the same project at the same time and be able to exchange our progress, but also just to have our dedicated uh, Ingrid knitting sessions. Um, and it's it's kind of like it's it makes me super happy but also kind of sad that this is something that we're kind of doing as a goodbye now so i don't know if we'll be able to finish the sweaters before i leave or if we'll have our cast off session maybe via facetime not sure would be fun to be able to wear our respective Ingrid sweaters together in the same room at some point. So I'm hoping that maybe next year, I don't know, at Rhinebeck or something, I really want to go to yarn festivals, but um, this year it's not working out, but maybe, I don't know, maybe next year at Rhinebeck we can wear them together. So um, yeah, let's plan for that medicine. <laughs> I'm also going to pull forward acquisitions a little bit with this already because uh, it fits here. First of all, obviously the yarn was an acquisition, so I got uh, 700 grams of that. Let's see how much I will end up using. As I said, it's the Cascade 220, which I think will be a yarn that I'll be reusing because I love how bouncy and soft it is. I love this natural shade that is kind of a slightly warmish white. I can see myself making a lot of things out of this colorway in particular also. But I have heard that I think the Phil Colana Peruvian Highland wool is basically the same. So it definitely has the same yardage and I think also it has the same fiber. And I guess they probably will work up the same way. So I'm looking forward to try Phil Colana Peruvian Highland wool once I get to the UK because I think it's also pretty accessible there. Next things of acquisitions that I'm gonna pull forward a little bit are these cables. I talked about them in my knit and chat if you've watched that. These are the Lantern Moon Swivel Cables. I'm swiveling here 
I don't think you can see that, that I got last time and I hadn't, um, I hadn't tried them out that much yet. So the cool thing is that the, that these cables from Lantern Moon fit with the Licker needles and with the Knit Pro needles. So that's why I got them because they are with the swiveling. I find that, uh, I find it more enjoyable to work on them because they don't bend so much, not the same way as the Knit Pro or Knitter's Pride cables bend. I'm very much enjoying knitting with them. To me, they remind me a little bit of the Chaoguru Red Lace cables. The only difference is that the swivel joint that these have has a slight, not really a gap, but here where they connect is a little catch. Uh, I haven't experienced this catch yet because I'm working, I think it's because I'm working with bigger needles and a thicker yarn now. But I have talked to Melissa from Wild Nature Knits who has ordered them after talk to, I talked about them last time and has said that with a very thin yarn or thinner needles the, the yarn does tend to catch which obviously is very annoying. So just because I promised an update in my knit and chat as well. I really enjoy the cables. I still have to try them on thinner yarn, but be warned that if you want to combine them with your Liquor or Knit Pro, whatever needles that you might experience this catching as well. So they're not the perfect wooden needles plus cable alternative to the Chago Red Lace. So we're still, we're still looking for that. If you have any other hacks or nice, tips for tools that are kind of like the Chago Red Lace, but for those of us who enjoy wooden needles more, please drop them in the comments below because I'm very curious about that. Um, still trying to find my very perfect needles and cable combination. All right, let's move on to my last wig, which I don't want to talk too much about because I have sh talked about it Okay, let's move on to my last whip, which I don't want to talk too much about because I have talked about this in previous episodes. And this are the red reddish socks, which I have, whoop, I had as a half finished object a few months ago. Then I cast on the second sock a few weeks ago. And in the last podcast episode, I had just about finished the color work of this sock. You can see I've made quite some progress. I've added the heel. I'm now on the foot. But I've stopped working on this again because I'm running out of yarn. I bought a 50 gram ball of yarn for these socks and obviously did not realize that by making much much bigger socks I would need much more yarn that I'm used to for myself even if there's color work involved and even if I'm not using this main color for the whole sock. So I'm making these as a gift for a more big-footed person and I have only this little bit of yarn left. I still have, I think, about an inch or maybe two even to go. So I first thought I could use some kind of different brown yarn and you do some helical knitting to sort of blend it in a little bit, but I don't really have any yarn that is that matches this yarn in terms of how it looks like both color wise but also the thickness of the fiber and because I'm making this as a gift knit and because it has all this color work in it I don't want to make it look extra scrappy I don't know I, I first thought about it just because I was like well do I really want to buy another full like 50 gram ball of yarn just to finish this but actually yes I do because I think if someone would give me a gifted sock with all of this detail in it and then it has some sort of kind of messy color filling in at the bottom. I wouldn't be annoyed, I would still be grateful, but I think I it's just I don't I don't want to do that. So I will bite the bullet and just get a 50 gram ball of yarn for this and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to use it as a contrast color for socks in the future. The second reason I didn't uh, that wasn't my favorite solution is because I don't love working with this yarn so much. This is the John Arban Exmoor sock yarn, which is a blend of several sheep fibers um, and I think 10% nylon. And it's much more rustic than any of the sock yarn that I'm used to that has any sort of merino in it, which is fine. I think it's fine to wear on the feet, but I do notice that working with it is not as fun because it doesn't have as much bounce to it as the merino yarn and it feels a bit more stiff. 
So if you're knitting it on tiny needles round and round and round, I find that I have to take breaks earlier with this yarn than with the other sock yarn that I'm used to, or like the sock yarn that I used here, for example, in the cuff. It's just a regular merino nylon superwash blend. Um, and that flows nicer through my hands. But yeah, I think I should still just get the appropriate color. I'm hoping they still have the same dye lot as when I bought the yarn, but let's see. I will update you on this next time. Hopefully next time this sock will also be done and I'll be able to show the full pair in the finished objects. Okay, let's move on to my new acquisitions. I've covered a few of these already, but I have more to show. I put them all together. Don't worry, it's not... I think the new acquisitions are until here. The rest of the basket are other things, but I just wanted to put them together this way because I thought it was very pretty with all these colors. Maybe can make a thumbnail out of this. Let's go through them. Already talked about the Cascade 220. Wanted to talk about other yarns. Okay, so the first yarn I want to talk about is the yarn that I thought about immediately when I got the notice that I was accepted to the job I applied for in the UK. Um, when I heard the news, I was obviously very, very happy about it, but within the next hour or so, I started thinking about like, okay, which yarn, which yarn is like top of the list yarn that I need to get in the US because it won't be as accessible anymore whenever I move to the UK. And um, this, is, this is the thing that the yarn that came immediately to the top of my mind. This is the Kinetic Knitter. Uh, Indie Diakara, uh, based in the US, who, and this is the Surrey Lace yarn, um, the colorway Crowd Pleaser. I fell in love with this yarn when Chelsea made, I think, a sweater number nine, some sweater out of it, holding it together with Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool, and all of these beautiful, beautiful colors make these most gorgeous painted speckles on the yarn so I knew that I wanted this I love the colors in this because you have these like really rich saturated yellows that look kind of similar actually to this uh, cardigan that I made and then you have this sort of apple green some specks of aqua orange some lavender here even it's just ah it's just the most beautiful rainbow of colors in this game so I wanted to get 150 grams of this so I could make a sweater out of it and because I didn't know how long the visa process would take, I wasn't entirely sure if this, so this is dyed to order, if this yarn would arrive on time, but it did. Um, and I'm so, so happy that I still got the chance to get it. And I'm really looking forward to buy the yarn that I'm gonna pair it up with later this autumn or in the winter and make the most beautiful crowd pleaser sweater out of this. I'm thinking at the moment to maybe hold it with the white maybe even the natural Cascade 220 or of the Colonna Peruvian Highland wool, or maybe a very, very soft pink, uh, and then make a zipper, zipper sweater by Petit Knit out of it, because I feel like that could show off the yarn pretty nicely. Um, but let's see. So still gonna wait with my final decision, obviously, until I actually get the yarn and make it. Another yarn that I really wanted to get before I left uh, was this fingering weight oh it comes out really bright like really intense on the screen um maybe it's because the light catches it that way it's not this extreme glowing orange in real life i would say i'm trying to find a way where it's less where the light hits it less so it's a bit comes a bit out a bit more Maybe here, I don't know. So this is the yarn that I wanted to get because it's sold at my local yarn shop and I made uh, socks, a uh, contrast cuff in socks out of it previously. So in these socks, this is the cuff that I made with this. This is what it looks like knit up two by two rib. And I love this color and I wanted to make a hat out of it, but the 
quantity that I had left from just dipping into the ball for the sock contrast color was not enough to make a hat. So I wanted to get another skein and I still had a gift card for my local yarn shop. So this is, I think, a pretty small brand actually. I'm not sure if you can even get them online. But the nice thing is that my local yarn shop, Nitty City, they sometimes acquire from smaller indie dyers so that you can try out these yarns without having to order from them yourself. So this is, I think the um, dyer is called Friendly Products. And this is the fingering weight yarn in the colorway Burnt Amber. It's just a regular 75% Zabosh Merino, 25% nylon blend and fingering weight. But I'm planning to, together with the um, ball that I already had, that I already used a little bit of to hold this together and make a hat. I'm thinking the Oslo hat by Petite Knit because I want a very easy folded brim stockinette hat to wear in autumn and feel like, I don't know, like a ver perfect autumn girly. But I'm still thinking to maybe make another hat. Um, I think it'll become the Oslo hat, but if you have any very favorite patterns for hat recommendations in a DK weight yarn, please comment below because I'm also, of course, curious to see which hats you enjoy making. Last yarny acquisition are these three skeins of Hudson and West. This is the Weld yarn, which is their fingering weight yarn. It's a bit of a heavier fingering weight, I think. It's a 50 gram skein. Uh, 200 yards and it's a 70% US Merino non superwash and 30% Corydale. Generally I've always been interested in trying out several yarn blends and not getting too focused on the superwash Merino because I'm, I mean, lots of indie dyers used it, use it, that's fine, I'm very happy to use it there as well. But sometimes I just want to see what other yarn blends feel like on the skin and to work with. And also I got a little bit annoyed with the slight pilling issues that I have with this top. So I wanted to also try some more interesting, different to me, fiber blends and different sheep species. So I went, when I went for a hike with my partner a few weeks ago in upstate New York, I also stopped by the local yarn shop in Beacon. And I found this yarn there and I really like these different colors. So the colors are Mallard, Tobacco and Fawn. So Fawn is this light one, Mallard is this one. And I picked them up because I saw these very, very pretty Larkspur Knits colorwork socks that look almost like you have a little pine tree forest on your socks and I wanted to make them. I'm not sure if I'll end up making them with this yarn because it's a bit thicker than the sock yarn that I'm used to and I have to figure out how the gauge would work and so on. But if I don't make the socks with that, I was thinking... Someone's on the roof. Technically, no one is allowed to go onto our roof, so I was surprised about the noise. Well, anyways, so if I don't end up making the socks, I'm probably gonna make maybe fingerless mitts and try to see if I can get the colorwork pattern from the socks onto the fingerless mitts but i really like this color combination it's very foresty to me very autumnal very much yeah walk in the woods and i love it so that's another acquisition okay and the last thing that i wanted to show you are some small notions i guess or like more accessories so one thing that I also got in Beacon at this yarn shop are these labels uh, which say yay 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 I finished. I think there are eight labels in here. I wanted something that I could clearly mark my knits with uh, and sometimes I have a few tops where I always have to take my time to figure out what the front and what the back is and I wanted to get these labels that I could sew into the back just to figure it out a bit quicker and I found these ones quite cute. I also really like the idea of picking up different types of labels in different yarn shops wherever I go and then have an added layer or element of memory of travel or visiting and connecting with different knitters around the world in the labels and not only in the yarns that I pick up. So yeah, I haven't used these yet but probably I should just take a day uh, afternoon or so in the next weeks and 
knit or uh, sew these ones into the garments that I need them in. The brand of this is Shellyken Wear Flare. I think so. So these are one thing that I got. And then the other thing that I got are stitch needle stoppers because I only have a few needle stoppers and I picked up some a few months ago that are these sunflowers that always bring me joy when I take them off my needles. So I thought, okay, let's, if autumn is not coming soon enough, let's get autumn into our house and into our knitting in different ways. So I picked up different ones, like several ones. The first ones are these pumpkin needle stoppers, which are a lot of fun. I love them. Um, I also picked up from the same shop, let me just put them on because they're easier to show off than when I hold them up. These little acorns. I don't know if any of you like Zelda, um, Legend of Zelda. I played the first one on the Switch a few years ago. I still have to play the second one, but acorns always remind me of the Koroks and the Korok seeds. So this is very making me very happy. Um, and then with these two stitch markers, I also picked up because it was you could add it on for a very low price. This progress keeper or sorry stitch marker that is this tiny little ghost, isn't it cute? So I picked these up from a shop on Etsy that is Swallow's Nest handmade. So if you're curious about any of these, um, visit this. The, um, she also has other needle stoppers and stitch markers, but these ones were the ones that I liked the most and that felt the most seasonally appropriate to me at this point. Okay, and this is all that we have in terms of knitting and acquisitions. I wanted to talk a little bit about some favorites as well. Just general favorites. I know that in some previous video I had a little book section at the end and another I recommended some YouTubers and I think I'm just gonna start doing a general recommendation section at the end and just talk about whatever um, I feel like talking about in terms of things that I enjoyed. So the first thing that I want to talk about is actually a book that I already mentioned last time. This is the book The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Borrowed it from the library so I don't have it here anymore. I only have the second one here which is called The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. These are books by the author Carissa Broadbent and they're fantasy, romance, novels. I already talked a little bit about it in the last video. So the first book is basically about a young woman who grows up in a vampire kingdom and she enters this tournament um, with mostly other vampires because whoever wins the tournament uh, can have gets basically a free wish granted from their goddess and she wants to sort of level up with the vampires and get powers of her own and it's a fun mix of Hunger Games meets maybe even Akatar you could say so Court of Thrones and Roses it's been years since I read that book and I've never been very much of a fey fairy whatever fan myself so i'm very happy to have found something that has similar vibes for me but then features vampires which are to me some of my favorite mythical fantasy creatures i know that they've gone into a little bit of um hiding maybe or they haven't been very popular ever since the big boom of twilight and everything that followed but I always really enjoyed them in, I don't know, shows like True Blood and other fantasy novels. So I'm very happy that they're maybe in my eyes, because I'm paying attention to it, but that they're making some sort of comeback. I really enjoyed this first book. It is very plot driven, packed with action. There's a little bit of spice in it, a romance story. So it's a very enjoyable page turning mix. And this second one, I'm only about 100 pages in, but I'm also very much enjoying it so far and very happy that there'll be a third one waiting for me still, well, whenever it comes out next year, I guess. So if that's any of that that I just talked about sounds like something for you, then I think that the Serpent and the Wings of Night, so the first one, could be something for you as well. 
On the note of vampires, the other thing that I'm really enjoying right now is a TV show that is called A Discovery of Witches. This is a TV show that came out a few years ago and is based on a book series that I also read at least the first two books of. So under the same name, Discovery of Witches, the author is called Deborah Harkness. And the story revolves around a woman who is a historian, she's a scientist, basically she um, researches the history of science and she also comes from a family of witches but kind of rejects the whole idea of her difference, like the difference between her and humans, so she doesn't really want to become part of the witch community. And in this world you also have some other creatures such as vampires and this whole book is about on the one hand, a love story between her and a vampire, but also about this book that she uh, looks at for her research, but that seems to be very, very important in terms of the origin of life for all these different creatures. Um, and what I loved a lot about the books and now also love about the show is that it has all the academic vibes in, I don't know, like it's set in Oxford, so you have these like old libraries and sometimes a bit scholarly humor or banter and especially the show I think also does a very great job because it's set in autumn does a very great job at creating this autumnal atmosphere the knitwear in the show in the first season is insane it, you don't see a lot of it but whenever someone wears a knit piece it looks gorgeous I'm actually thinking about maybe making a video for that because it just looked so so perfect so this series is very very enjoyable it has three seasons in total I've watched the first one a few years ago when none of the following seasons they hadn't been out yet but now that they are i've rewatched the first season and i'm making my way through the second season would very much recommend if you're into love stories some slight historical elements um also note the male main character is he's cute but his voice i don't know if you know matthew good the actor I've uh, seen him in several other movies before and I'm always absolutely in love with the way he speaks and the timbre of his voice. That's very specific, but just telling you, if you're if you're knitting and you're not always looking at the screen, it's important to have a nice voice to listen to, right? So just saying, I mean, check it out yourself. Let me know if you also, if you, if you see or hear what I hear in that voice. Anyways, so these are my two vampire recommendations. If you are into vampires as well, please let me know below if you have any more recommendations of things that I should check out because I can feel that my vampire era is sort of starting up again. Um, and I'm happy to get recommendations. And then one last thing in the uh, with respect to creating autumn when it's not actually here yet is this tea. I picked up this spice chai at Trader Joe's the other day and I'm loving making iced chai out of it so I usually just use double the amount that I would usually use so two bags instead of one for a glass about like this high maybe with water boiling water and then I just let it cool off in the morning or put it in the fridge and fill it up with some oat milk and this way I have a nice refreshing drink that is nicely spiced and already brings a little bit of promise of the colder months ahead and autumnal coziness and all the cinnamon and all these nice things that I'm looking forward to. So much for my recommendations. I will wrap it up here. I hope that I will still be able to film another podcast episode in this apartment before I move. Uh, the move will be chaotic. I just asked for the... I um, sent off my visa application this morning spend way too much money on visa fees and health insurance fees which put me into a quite bad mood that's why i also decided to film to cheer myself up a little bit um so before all of the stress of the actual move starts i hope that i'll still be able to record another podcast episode and maybe hopefully update you on some objects that i now have on the needles um turning into finished objects let's see Please let me know below what you've been working on while watching this episode, if you did. And I hope to see you soon in another episode. And until then, happy knitting and happy first vibes of fall, hopefully, if you're also in the Northern Hemisphere. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you soon again. Bye bye.